Hi, everyone. On September 19th, the Holy Orthodox Church commemorates St. Theodore of Canterbury. St. Theodore was born in the year 602, and he was born in St. Paul's city of Tarsus in Cilicia. He then went to Athens, where he received a very good formal education, and a little while later accepted tonsure as a monk and then after many, many years, found himself, by the grace of God, in Rome. Now at that time in Rome, the Pope was trying to decide who was going to replace the recent Archbishop of Canterbury, who had just reposed. St. Theodore, because of his many virtues and his intellect, became the obvious choice. And so, beginning at the young age of 66, he headed towards Britain and arrived in Canterbury and accepted the position as Archbishop. Now Britain at that time was just on the verge of what has been called its Golden Age, but it wasn't there yet. St. Theodore found himself in the midst of many warring bishops, of people who simply just did not want to get along for various reasons of a still uh, remaining pagan influence and problems with the Irish church. Theodore was someone who set a high, high standard in terms of spirituality and immediately set about work of ordaining bishops, of preaching and teaching the faith, and most of all, of establishing new monastic communities. He was a great success in this, and in just a number of years already, the very disparate and sometimes tempestuous Church of Britain was becoming one, which is something they had not seen for a long time. The Synod of Whitby in 664 had finally agreed that the Roman Byzantine Pascalian, the way of dating Pascha that we use today was to become the standard. But yet the Irish church was rejecting it, feeling that their tradition was even more ancient and was the one that should be used. Well, in terms of its ancientness, they may indeed have been right. But still, because of this insistence on maintaining it against a very notable and formidable Council, which Whitby was, they were considered to be in schism. At least St. Theodore thought that they were and treated them quite strictly. Anyone who was found to be keeping this custom was to first be excommunicated for a year before being allowed back to Holy Communion. But as time went on, eventually the Irish gave in and accepted the decisions of Whitby. And so the church enjoyed a period of oneness, of harmony, and of great evangelical outreach. St. Theodore continued along this path, riding on horseback from town to town, city to city, monastic community to monastic community, continuing to preach the gospel to encourage all those whom he met and encourage them to oneness in Christ. After a while, meaning the next 21 or 22 years, he finally reached the end of his rope and died at the age of 87. There was a book, a collection called Theodore's Penitentiary that was not written by him, but was certainly collected of sayings and canons that he had laid down and gathered together for the use of the faithful that had a great influence in the Church of Britain. Theodore was someone who was totally dedicated to Christ and who sets a great example for all of us today. We might think that at the age of 66 that it would be time to ret retire or to settle down or to give up the position to someone who had greater energy, perhaps. But yet he showed that even at this advanced age of 66, he was 
not letting on that he was going to be any lesser a person than someone half his age in terms of his evangelical fervor and his commitment to Christ and the spreading of the gospel. He literally stayed on until he dropped. This was for him the message of Christ to all bishops everywhere, that they were committed to fervently and evangelically and energetically engaged in the propagation of the faith until they could do nothing else. Too often today, perhaps, we see clergy retiring maybe before they should, that they should keep on, not once thinking of stopping, as the apostles certainly didn't, until they could breathe no more. Indeed, one cannot imagine any of the apostles thinking that somehow a time was going to come when they would retire and take it easy. No, except for one, they all went on to a glorious martyrdoms and spreading the gospel to all four corners of the earth. St. Theodore thought that this was the thing that he was to do also. Because once he had reached Rome, perhaps it was going to be a life of study and contemplation and prayer for him. But instead, no, he was called upon to assume the greatest task that he had yet encountered in assuming the Archbishopric of Canterbury and trying to bring the native Britons, who were a very difficult bunch of people, together as one in the faith. St. Theodore's reign inaugurated the golden age of English Christianity. Well after the year 1054, when England had unfortunately apostatized from the Orthodox faith, Theodore's relics were exhumed after 400 years and found to be incorrupt. May everything that he did in his energy and his love of Christ come to us also as we proclaim with complete fervor and complete love of the Lord, His holy faith, until we breathe our last too. Bye-bye.